Week 12, problem 11. A material having an index or a fraction of 1.3 is used as an anti-reflective coating on a piece of glass, 1.5. What should be the minimum thickness of this film in order to minimize reflection of 550 nanometer light? Okay, so I'm going to start by drawing a picture. So we have, maybe I'll use lines. I'll use lines. Line, bam, make it a little bit thicker. There we go. And blue, okay. And I'll copy and paste. So, we look at this guy. I'm going to say here we have air with C equals 1. Then we're going to have the coating, which we know to be 1.3. Uh, hmm, I'm going to say velocity equals C. And I'll say index refraction equals 1. Index refraction equals 1.3. It means it's going slower. And then for glass, we have it as 1.5. So this is similar to the last problem. I might have actually explained it very well in the last problem, so I should probably do a better job this time. So we have light that comes in like this. It bounces off every time there's a transition between different materials or materials of different indices of refraction. Then there's going to be some that's reflected, a and you can determine that by a coefficient of reflection. Um, and some of it's going to be transmitted. So the idea is you have some that's reflected, and then you have some that's reflected off the second layer down here. And if this thickness right here is lambda over 4, then the total distance traveled in the down and up would be a total of lambda over 2. And that will put the 2. Um, the reflected and the transmitted uh, wave reflection 180 degrees out of phase, which will create destructive interference. So, first thing we need to do is we need to find the lambda, the wavelength of the light inside the coating. And since we have a index refraction of 1.3, we will take the uh, wavelength of the light, which I think is what, 550? 550. 550, and we'll divide by 1.3. So we do 550 divided by 1.3, bum bum bum, and we get 423. I'll say 423, 423. All right. So now that's the wavelength that we have the light when it's actually in the coating. So we need a quarter of that. To find what we need, so 105. Mm, I'll say 108. Mm, mm, I'll say 105. How do I go from 105 to 108? I'll say 105.7. 105.8. There we go. Nanometers. And that's the thickness that would uh, cause this to minimize reflection. All right. So now they're like, well, instead of material with an index fraction, this time we use a material of 1.6. So we give those three, and we say six. All right, so this actually introduces it to, to a new concept. Um, this is the idea of, the phase, of a phase shift. So what happens is we have transmitted light, comes in here, and the light that bounces off is going to be phase shifted by 180 degrees. This guy's still going to come down, it's going to bounce off, and it's going to come back. But this time, instead of finishing up with, we want this total distance instead of be lambda over 2, we want it to be a full lambda, which means full wavelength, which means that half of that then would have to be a wavelength over 2. Don't ask me why phase shifts occur. Um, in math classes, they'd explain this, be like, well, this is beyond the scope of the class, implying that they know the answer without actually telling it to you. So if I was a math guy, which I guess I kind of am, I would say this, this is beyond the scope of this class. It probably isn't. I just have no idea why it happens. When you have index refractions that go um, from high to lower, i.e. from, oh, sorry, I got the phase shift wrong. This is not the phase shift here. The phase shift is here. When you go from an index refraction, go down from like 1.6 to 1.5, then you're going to have the phase shift. You go from 1.3 to 1.5, then 
then it's going to be fine. So what we're going to have then is we're still it's still idea is um, we're going to want we're going to have a phase shift and then we're going to want a full wavelength here to uh, compensate. So the wave they initially reflected that's going to stay the same, but the phase shift that um, comes down and then back up is going to be phase shifted. So we want to find first the wavelength. So the wavelength will be, um, what is it, 550? I think I remember it by now. 550. And this time we're going to divide by 1.6. 1.6. And that gives us a wavelength of, come on, 343. Did we do that already? Hmm, okay. 343. 343 nanometers, All right? And then we're going to want a full um, wavelength of that. So, but it's a full wave over two two travel distances. So we're going to divide that by two. Before we divided it by four, now we're just going to divide it by two. So 172. I'm going to say 172. And 171.9 nanometers. Bam. So. If it travels down here, 171.9 uh, travels back up, 171.9, you'll have a total of 343 nanometers of travel, which will then put it, when you take into account the phase shift, 180 degrees out of phase. So, what is it? 171.9? 171.9. So now you're asking yourself, why did you write in the second box? Why didn't you write in the first box? Well, the first box is going to be zero. So this phase shift puts it 180 degrees out of phase. So if this distance here was like slightly bigger than zero, like the proverbial, proverbial zero plus that you see in math, as long as it hits that transition, there's going to be a phase change. And that phase change will immediately put it out of phase. So you'll have some reflected light, which is still in phase, and you'll have some that's transmitted the infinitely testimony small distance and reflected at a phase change. That reflected at a phase change will then uh, cause a um, uh, cancellation, cancellation destructive interference. So zero nanometers will be one answer, 171.9 will be another answer. Um, wish I had a good explanation for why phase shifts occur. Um, I haven't found one yet, I'll keep looking. Um, but yeah, that's just part of life. Um, it does it with um, air, t with a uh, sound too, when you have like uh, water, you go to air, you're going to get a uh, reflection that phase shifts. So it's it's a, one of those unique facts that you just kind of, I guess at this point, just have to memorize without actually understanding. And I hate to say that, but that's how life works. All right, that should be it for this homework. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I do, and I will see you next week.